the Thoughty OT podcast. I, I'm curious because I, I've watched like all the seasons, Love on the Spectrum. I love oh, yeah. Love on the Spectrum because it really highlights all of the ranges hmm. of individuals with, sorry, autistic people. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I would love to know your thoughts on that show. I love that Love on the Spectrum. Funny thing about me is I tend to avoid everything in the mainstream media that is at mm. all related to autism in fiction. Gotcha. Mostly because it hits a bit too close to home sometimes. I'm kind of used to watching things that have neurotypicals in that I feel very detached from. Like, I, I'm, I, I like that sort of emotional distance. Sort of like the difference between... I don't know. It's it's kind of, it's it's more more for me. It feels more like watching like a nature documentary, for me when I when I watch dramas and stuff that are, you know, have neurotypicals in. But when there's like autism involved, it's like there's some aspects to it. And I know that Love on the Spectrum it's it's sort of a reality sort of TV thing. I did watch the first season, and I was actually quite surprised about sort of you know as you said the range of individuals that were on there. They had they didn't. From what I saw, they weren't particularly going out for targeting individuals that have this set of stereotypes that they're looking for in order to generate clicks and to generate interest. They did just have like a range of different people, which I thought was really great. Some sometimes the the production choices they were a little bit on the edge for me, particularly around music. Sort of the do 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 kind of the light light hearted like they don't know where they are they they don't know what to do and oh my god what's going to happen that kind of music kind of feels a bit circusy in terms of the music choice which I wasn't too keen on mm -hmm. I wasn't I was also not too keen on including a lot of the dialogue between the autistic individuals and their parents mm. and sort of the ways that their parents handled kind of conversations yeah, yeah like kind do of, this make sure you prepare this way yeah yeah and, and that's fine i think it's just more i think they, they kind of had this air of banter uh the cameramen or the interviewers and the parents mm. where like the parents were like oh this is like rolling their eyes this is the autism thing like mm. um whereas you know, the autistic person was just trying to have a conversation and just being themselves and stuff. So it's kind of pointing that out as like, a, I don't know. It may, it kind of felt, felt a bit infantilizing in some aspects when they, when they involve the parents. Um, not to say that living with your parents or having them around or having input is bad. It's just kind of the way that they treated them when they were in front of the camera it's like oh don't say that like they're their own person let them say what they want right be authentically so, autistic right like yeah. that's what the show is all about finding yeah, not, someone who understands helping, them it's not about helping someone's kid get a, a date right. it's about helping an adult get a date <laughs> correct <laughs> it's, it's, that, it's that kind of lens that they choose to frame it with which is kind of rub me up the wrong way but you know I, I thought it was generally quite quite good compared to perhaps some of the other stuff there's another show isn't there there's like uh the undateables or something like that which i think hmm. features a lot of autistic people sometimes that's the maybe. title undateables yeah yeah i think lo love on the spectrum was definitely a bit of a better design choice than the undateables <laughs> yeah <laughs> 